nickel and I got a dime. Let's get together and buy some wine. Some buy them pints and some buy them quarts. But if you buy half gallons, you're playing it smart. Drinking wine, wine, wine. Hey, buddy, pass that bottle me. Today on the 5 Minute Wine School, we're talking titratable acidity, which means chemistry. Serious chemistry. Titratable acidity. It's the measure of the total amount of acids in your grape juice or wine. It's often measured before you harvest as an indication of how ripe the grapes are. It can also be measured before bottling to let you know if you have a good balance of acid to sugar. And some people don't measure it at all because they rely on their taste buds to let them know how much acid is in there. Titration is also a technique that we're going to use a lot through the rest of these videos in other analyses. So it's important to understand the technique and we're going to talk a lot about endpoints in this video. So stay tuned and we're going to measure some titratable acidity. Today we're working with strong acids and bases. So it's important to wear our safety equipment, including glasses, gloves, and a lab coat. Okay, what do we need to get started? Well, for the hardware, we're looking at a burette stand, a burette clamp, and a 25 mil Class A burette, accurate to 0.05 millimeters. We need 125 milliliter flats, 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, and that should do it. Waste bucket. For the software, we need deionized water, phenolphthalein indicator, and 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. Today we're working with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. This can weaken over time, so it's important that we put a label on it with the date and when we opened it so that people know how old the material is. Before we start our titration, we need to fill our burette with the sodium hydroxide. I have a waste bucket, uh, stopcocks closed, and I'm using a funnel to minimize any spillage. Now you want to make sure that you flush your burette and get any air bubbles that might be caught below the stopcock out. This is an example of what water and phenolphthalein looks like. The water is slightly acidic, so the phenolphthalein is not going to have any color. This is the light peach color, hopefully you can see it against my white background there, that we're looking for. This is what happens if we overshoot. You don't want to get to this dark of a pink color with the phenolphthalein indicator. Okay, first thing we're going to do is add approximately 50 milliliters of deionized water to our flask. It can just be approximate because the water shouldn't be contributing any um, ions to our solution, any acids. Next we're going to add phenolphthalein indicator solution. Wow, that's a mouthful. This can be about three drops. I think I got four on there, but it should be fine. Next thing we want to do is we need to get it to our end point before we start, before we add the wine, to make sure there's no hydrogen ions present. Right now we just have our water and phenolphthalein indicator solution. We want to titrate it to the light peach end point, and because there's no acids in here, it shouldn't take more than a few drops of sodium hydroxide. So we're going to go slow. That looks about right. So the next step is to add our wine. Now this is where accuracy counts. We need to add exactly 10 milliliters of our wine sample to our flask. I'm using a 50 mil graduated cylinder. So we've got our 10 mils of wine in our graduated cylinder and we're going to add that to our 
water and phenolphthalein indicator that's already been titrated to a light peach endpoint. Before we start, we need to record our initial volume. It's 1.70. It's okay to go a little bit faster at first, but as you get closer to where you think your endpoint's going to be, you have to slow down your titration. And there we have it, a nice light peach endpoint. Now we need to record our final volume, which is 10.45. Now that we've got our initial volume and our final volume, we can do our calculation for titratable acidity. Our initial volume was 1.70. Our final volume was 10.45, giving us a titer volume of 8.75. The formula for titratable acidity is 0.75 times our titer value, giving us a TA, which is titratable acidity in grams per liter of 6.56. Congratulations. Let's recap in case everybody fell asleep out there. So titratable acidity measures the total amount of acid in your grape juice or wine. It's always best to start out with fresh sodium hydroxide so you know that your molarity is accurate. When titrating, always <laughs> start fast but finish slow. You don't want to miss your endpoint. And it is a skill, so if the first couple times you go overshoot your endpoint, it happens to the best of us. Just not me. Well, that's it for 5 Minute Wine School. See you next time.